Hello and welcome friends to another exciting episode where I review vintage fountain pens. Today I have for you a legendary fountain pen and we are talking about this Parker Duofold in jade green celluloid from the 1930s. To be more exact, this model that you see in front of you it is a Parker Streamlined Duofold Senior in Jade Green from the 1930s. One of the clues of determining the age of this Parker Duofold lies in the imprint on the barrel. And if we zoom on it, we have GOS Parker, Parker Duofold and made in USA and we have another clue if we zoom on it we can see an 8 right here 8 of course unfortunately the material has discolorated in time um, a good thing is that the cap remained relatively the same uh, in its vivid colors but the barrel, due to the actions of the fingers when you write with it, and of course of the interior sack of this fountain pen, because by the way guys, this is a button filler, so it means that you push on this rod, it's an inside it there is a sack and it fills with ink. Let me tell you about the importance of the duofold in the world of fountain pens. Practically the duofold is the pen that made the Parker company in one of the greatest pen manufacturers of the world. Before this appeared on the market, you must know that the selections color-wise of fountain pens was quite quite narrow. So here we have a black rubber material and in time it develops this brown patina to it or we have we had also the red rubber and this is in this uh, ripple ripple effect both of them are made by waterman but parker came out with an interesting interesting uh, design in uh, early 1921 and they called it the big red so it used this material practically they found a way to make the rubber in a red or orange color and this meant big big sales in early 1921, Duofold had its world premiere. It was approximately 139 millimeters long and 60 millimeters wide. On your models, it was named the Senior, or among collectors, it is considered the Big Red. Unfortunately, this is not a Big Red, it is a mortar fountain pen that mimics a lot the Parker Big Red from that time. I don't have a Big Red in my collection. Practically in a few months, the Duofold was the best selling high priced fountain pen on the market. The early fountain pens didn't have uh, those rings that you see on uh, this cap. And of course they had different engravings on the barrel, so different from this Parker Duofold. In 1922 two smaller pens were added to the line. The Junior, which was practically the same uh, version of this Senior, but uh, a little bit smaller. And the Lady Duofold, and I have one example of the Lady Duofold right here. The most interesting development is in 1927. Practically in 1927 we see the introduction of the green jade, this beautiful, beautiful color. Also the blue marble or lapis uh, 
Lazuli, as you see on this model. And this were a direct reaction of the Parker fountain pen to the success of this fountain pen. Of course, this is the famous, famous Sheffer Jade Green, which had this different filling um, mechanism, a lever filler, which was promoted back then by Sheffer. And also Sheffer introduced this new plastic, this new celluloid, to the market of fountain pens in early 1920s. So this had a tremendous, tremendous success. And practically, those lines of celluloid that you see here were the direct response of the Parker to the success of the Sheffer. In 1928, we see the introduction of the two rings on the senior model and three rings on the lady model. But we will put the lady model aside and we will concentrate on this senior model. Practically in the 1930s, the imprints are these that you see here. Before of those were other imprints, but this is the imprint that was characteristic of the 1930s. You must know that in 1933, Parker stopped the production of Duofall in uh, the factory in Janesville, USA. But the production of Duofall continues in its factories in England and Canada, where they produced large quantities and in the interesting colors well into the 1940s. I paid for this beauty only 590 lace, approximately 120 euros or 141 American dollars. For me, it doesn't matter that I don't have vivid colors on the barrel, but I love, I love the beauty of this fountain pen. Let me zoom on it to show you the beautiful, beautiful cap. So those two rings, which were introduced in 1928, they are gold plated. Another interesting clip is uh, the Parker clip, of course, with this ending, this ball ending. And nice, nice to see that <laughs> they uh, copied this sphere ending from Sheffer. Interesting to see. We have a flat top here and a flat top there. Interesting to see that the tendons of this cigar shape rounded from Sheffer was not copied by Parker, but some localites from Europe, you can see they had this flat cap and the ending was rounded. <laughs> so this is a Scotland pen, the Scotland pen from Italy, quite a rare, rare beauty of a fountain pen that copied the design of the big duo fold. Returning to our fountain pen, the cap on screws and it reveals, let's start with the back, it reveals this feed this Christmas shaped feed, ebonite feed. We have this interesting grip section and the beautiful, beautiful nib. Let me show you the beauty of this nib, guys. First of all, it's a one tone gold nib, 14 karat gold nib. We have Parker USA and definitely you can see the arrow shaped in the middle of the nib. This is, guys, one of my big nibs in my collection and it really gives a nice, nice aesthetic pleasing look. But also you can see in the writing sample, it writes quite, quite well. Again, guys, we have a button filler. Here we have the cap. We push on this button and the lever operates the inner sac. 
I don't know if in this lighting you can see, but this is hard rubber. The grip section is made out of hard rubber. And I think also this material is hard rubber. It tends to discolorate in time and uh, it has this brown patina. This unscrews back. You have to be careful when you unscrew it back to be quite even. Yes, like this. And as a size reference, guys, this is a big, big fountain pen. And I will compare it with a newer fountain pen from uh, Mont Blanc. Let me show you. So first of all, let me compare it with a, a, her main rival from that time with the Sheffer. You can see the Sheffer is a narrower fountain pen. It's a level filler and I will compare it also with a cigar shaped Mont Blanc from the 1980s. The Meister took 146 and you already see that we have some big, big, big fountain pens. I will also leave the dimensions of uh, the Parker on the screen. So, Parker Streamlined Duo Fold Senior in Jade Green from the 1930s. And after that, I will do the writing sample with it. For the writing sample, let me see if I can find my Parker ink. What could be better for the writing sample than a Parker Quick ink? For a Parker pen, a Parker Quick ink. This is my go-to ink when it comes to vintage, vintage fountain pens. It has the right amount of lubrication to it and I highly recommend it to you also, guys. But before that, I will change the angle of the camera. So, bear with me for a second, guys. Okay. Now I'm ready for the writing sample. I will give a little shake to the ink bottle. I will gently open it. And now we will see how this performs. I think you heard the bubbles. Okay, guys. Now, let me take a little tissue. I have here a little tissue. I will gently clean it. And now I think I'm ready for the writing sample, just in case. Let me test it to see if I can write with it. Maybe a little zoom would be nice. Yes. So, guys, I have... Hmm. It doesn't want to write. Let me see. What is the problem? Well, it should write. Let me just clean it. Gently clean it. And I have here a Parker. Yes, now it writes. A Parker. Stream. Lined. Duo fold. Senior. in jade green from the 1930s by the way guy let's see after i put back this cap 
let me see if I can post it yes it can be posted Woo. hmm I don't like this it has some little drops of ink and this could mean that the ink sack is damaged okay I'm sorry guys hmm yes being such an old fountain pen of course i don't recommend posting it you can see at the end that it hold its original color because it was protected by this cap wonderful wonderful cap so i'm sorry guys i hope that our writing uh, session will continue in these conditions maybe yes a little bit of change to the so guys I, I've just changed the angle of the camera now I hope that you can see better so we have a 14 carat gold nib a beautiful beautiful nib with this engravings on it with the engravings of the arrow which I find fascinating it is a stiff nib, but let me see. Yes, you can see. So, no flex. In my opinion, judging by the way it writes, I believe this is a fine nib. Maybe even extra fine. It depends on how you define a fine nib. It's quite, quite a nice juicy nib, as you can see. Let me see if we can reverse write with it. So, reverse writing. And I'm definitely impressed. Yes, it's a yes on reverse writing. If normally it writes like a fine in reverse writing, I think it's easier to say we have an extra fine writing. Okay, now let me see the pressure test. So here, no pressure and here pressure so definitely no line variance let me show you to you guys how it does a signature <laughs> quite nice and yes i think now i will tell you about the quick brown fox so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Well, guys, I have to tell you, I'm quite, quite impressed about this fountain pen. I find it fascinating a fountain pen from the early 1930s that it is beautiful in this jade jade green practically this duo fold put the Parker name on the map it distinguished these producers among uh, other players American players and especially after the depression there were only three big manufacturers in America. There was Parker, there was Schaeffer, Waterman, Watermans, and Eversharp. Well, believe it or not, guys, this fountain pen and its variations sold between 1921 and 1933 in um, approximately 10 million examples so this is quite quite uh iconic fountain pen uh, one of the most famous fountain pens of all the fountain pens out there and i'm quite proud to have it in my collection and share it with you guys so thank you for your time this was my review i hope you've enjoyed it if you did enjoy it please subscribe to my channel to support my activity 
I want to wish you to have a nice day wherever you are guys please stay safe and we will see each other at the next episode till then bye bye and i will leave you with the wonderful wonderful colors of this beautiful beautiful material especially they are nice to see in this natural sunlight so have a great day guys, bye bye and stay safe, God bless you all, bye bye.